Welcome back. Now to our next conversation. Well, see, uh, global stock markets closed out 2021 with double-digit gains for the uh, third year in a row as easy monetary policy, you know, a flood of fiscal stimulus helped propel an economic recovery from the pandemic. Well, bringing it down to here to Nigeria, the equities uh, market was quite uh, positive in 2021. Uh, now let's uh, get an outlook for investment strategies uh, in 2022 with uh, Mr. Ayodeji Ebo, uh, Head Retail Investment at Chapel Hill, uh, Danam. Great to have you. Happy New Year. Good morning and Happy New Year to you. Very Good morning, to everyone. Good morning. Well, 2021, quite an interesting, you know, year for, uh, for markets. But uh, what would be your proposed investment strategy for investors, you know, uh, coming into 2022? Okay, thanks. Uh, I think the first thing for investors to understand is they will need to first set an objective for themselves. And beyond that, you also need to understand your risk appetite. So once you have those understanding, then you can now craft a portfolio. So in terms of the strategy, we will be pushing more for investment in corporate issuances. Uh, because of the low interest rates in the federal government uh, instruments. So, for instance, rather than invest more, much in, in, uh, in treasury bills, we can look at commercial papers that come with higher premium. Yes, it's, you may, it, it carries a bit of higher risk, but you also look at the names uh, of the companies that are issuing it before you also invest. Beyond that, uh, you, in, your, in the earlier segment, you spoke about your FX. So it's, it's also very important for investors to look at uh, the exposure to uh, dollar investment, maybe in the form of um, dollar mutual funds, US um, um, or I'll say foreign stocks, uh, those with strong fundamentals, as well as um, euro bonds. This will also help them hedge uh, their investment or their uh, savings uh, against uh, imported inflation as well as any depreciation or devaluation of the Naira. So by and large, it's, uh, investors need to be deliberate. Uh, they, uh, I think I missed out even for the Nigerian stocks. We still know that there are some sectors that, uh, we, that we believe that will perform well uh, in 2022, uh, especially you look at the financial services sector, you look at the telecom sector, and the industrial goods sector, we believe that uh, they will still be able to weather the storm despite that we are in a election year. All right. Uh, you know, you talked about uh, inflation rate, but how can investors reduce the impact on their uh, savings and investment? We see the, uh, uh, the World Bank there projecting, you know, Nigeria's inflation rate will be the highest globally uh, this year. Okay, thanks. I think one thing that I've noticed based on my frequent interaction with investors is that doing nothing makes you worse off. So you need to also always take that into consideration. So inflation rate as at uh, November is around 15.4% year on year. So rather than leaving your money in your savings account or just leaving it without any interest, it is important that you look for investments that will give you a bit of return to close that gap. So putting that into perspective, yes, may be very low, around uh, one year treasury is around 5.4%, but it has, um, is around, let's say, sub 9 or 10, 10%. So if you try to, if you invest in those instruments, or you also look at stocks that gives dividend yield of almost up to 10 double-digit dividend yield. So that will bridge the gap. So for investors, the focus should be on how do you want to reduce the impact on inflation on your savings or your investment? Because if you don't invest to even earn five or 6%, that 15% will reduce your purchasing power for your savings or for your investment. You have the impact of devaluation, impact of depreciation. Uh, so you need to be very deliberate on how you want to edge yourself um, against all these uh, potential impacts on your savings and investments. 
All right, you know, talking about hedging now, what are the what are the options available? Okay, thanks. So I, I will start with the dollar investment. It's very important that um, given the situation in Nigeria, you need to be exposed to dollars. So when I say exposure to dollars, you, you have the dollar neutral fund that has the entry of between $100 and $1,000. It means you can uh, set aside on a monthly basis or periodically invest in, in dollar neutral fund. You also have the euro bonds, though that have a very high entry barrier, uh, entry level uh, for some investment outfit between $50,000 to $200,000. You can also look at US stocks. There are stocks that have been able to weather the storm. You look at their past performance in the last five years. And if you don't want to be specific, even investing in stocks, there are ETFs that you can exchange traded funds that tracks different stocks and you can invest in them. Now, coming back to Naira investment, you look at money market investment and uh, fixed income uh, mutual funds. They, they also give impressive uh, return. And like I mentioned earlier, rather than putting most of your funds in trading views, commercial people, we expect that there will be more corporate insurance, insurances in this first quarter, given the low interest rate uh, environment, which is positive for the issuer. So investors should position um, in those stocks in the first quarter uh, of, of this year. And beyond that, also looking at equities, there are stocks that when you look at their dividend yield, which is like a, a pessimistic scenario, minimum you get a dividend, they are almost at 10% dividend yield. So when you also invest in those stocks, it also gives you that uh, potential to reduce the impact. And lastly, the alternative investments. Yes, it's high risk. It requires a lot of due diligence. So you may either want to go in through the mutual fund, their funds, their real estate funds, um, their infrastructure funds that you can invest in that, will, that also delivers above inflation um, return. Um, you, you also look at uh, the likes of uh, Crypto though it's currently not um, allowed in, in Nigeria, but you, you, you can look at different other classes of assets that can help you uh, to, to hedge against uh, the, the impact of inflation. Yeah, talking about crypto there, a lot of people have talked about you know, Bitcoin you know, being a hedge for inflation, but you know how volatile you know, that, market, that market can actually be. But what is the best uh, portfolio mix, uh, you know, right now, going into 2022? Okay, thanks. Uh, I would first like, like to state that it differs across investors. Objective differs, risk appetite differs. In terms of the available fund, investment horizon also differs. So you will need to craft or work with your portfolio manager or a professional investment advisor to guide you. But talking generally, the exposure, you should get exposed to money market investments. Um, I would say between 40 to 50%. You can also look at um, dollar investment, about 30% of your portfolio and maybe about 20% to uh, to equities, then uh, you can put about 10% to, to alternative assets uh, because of the high risks that they carry. And, and, and beyond that, in terms of uh, the, the crypto market, you, when it's really very volatile and investors need to understand the risk involved. Some, if you don't have that time to invest in, in um, invest in particular, uh, in particular coins, you can also look at the funds or the, the funds that track those, um, those coins. Uh, beyond that, there's, there are potential, you, based on what is uh, the current discussion around the metaverse coins, these are potential coins, uh, coins that has growth for the future. Yeah, this is not like a recommendation, but you also need to carry out your due diligence uh, based on your understanding, but we believe that 
based on the, what we've seen in 2021, uh, where we've already seen no companies, uh, top investment banks setting up funds around crypto. So we believe that at least for now, crypto is, is yet to stay and there's still potential for growth. Right. And, you know, narrowing down now to uh, fixed income, what's your outlook for the fixed income market? And, you know, what should investors be, be doing in that market? Okay, thanks. Uh, we expect that where the fixed income market interest rates would, would increase uh, uh, from, let's say, from the second to fourth quarter of this year. And the reasons are one, government is expected to, we expect government to front load their borrowing. When you look at the budget, you will see that gap. Uh, we, uh, one major factor that may not be a setback is the liquidity we're expecting in January. It's about over 800, um, over 800 uh, billion naira will mature in January, and that would reduce that impact. But notwithstanding, uh, 2022 is a pre election year. We expect a lot of volatility, which presents opportunities for, uh, for traders. Uh, and for most uh, retail investors, would propose that most people should focus on identifying commercial papers uh, issued by corporates, known corporates, and they should also be mindful of the rating of those corporates. Uh, with the low interest rate environment, uh, the uh, insurance, uh, corporate insurances should increase this year, so we expect that there, there should be positioning. Interest rate is expected to increase. Uh, we would see maybe before the end of the year, CBN may also want to increase the OMO rate. When you look at last year, what changed the game within the fixed income market was the increase in the OMO rate in February from about 5% to about 10.1%. So we expect that with, yeah, if, uh, with the expected hype in the global space, if that is implemented, then we we'll, would we'll see that uh, the uh, the CDN would also follow that trend, which would mean that um, that would be higher interest rate environment. So by and large, investors should keep as much liquidity as possible to take advantage of opportunities as they present as they present themselves. All right. And on the equities market side, you know, what are your top sectors in 2022 and what strategy do you, you know, recommend for the equities market? Okay, thanks. Uh, the first strategy on the equities market is to look at stocks that have consistent high dividend yield. So uh, when you look at the past three, four years, those that have been consistent, you can take position in, in them. Uh, so also, you also want to look at um, sectors. So you look at telecommunication sector. Uh, despite the challenges in 2020 and 2021, they have continued to grow at, uh, at a very impressive rate. The financial services, yes, we experienced a slowdown in 2021, which I feel will give them a, a strong um, lower base to move in 2020. In 2022, so you, uh, the only downside risk that we see within that uh, within the equities market is because of the election. And if also if I, the high interest rate environment persists, would also reduce interest within the equities market. So we are not um, significantly overweight in the equities. Just identify stocks that has potential for good dividend. And um, if you also have also have that long-term perspective. There will be opportunities, even as we approach the election, um, when you see the dip, just take positions uh, with the mindset that uh, maybe next uh, by 2020, or when the post is clearer, when we know the new government, the policy direction, then we will begin to see traction in the equities markets. All right, talking about identifying, you know, uh, good investments, you know, and stocks, you know, the, the knowledge, you know, investment gap is still very wide. You know, how can this, you know, gap be, be, be improved? Okay, thanks. I think the first 